Today we're going to do side-by-side -side comparisons of two versions of the Reese Sidewinder. And we'll throw in the pin box that came stock on my 2022 Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS. So let's start with the Reese 20K. Because I have the ram boxes on my tow vehicle i'm not able to use the stock pin box on the trailer and i'll actually show you why here in a little bit so i had the dealer install this 20k sidewinder which takes the pivot point from here the pin and moves it back about 22 inches to here so this becomes the pivot point. Um, this hitch works out really good. I probably put a thousand miles on the trailer towing with this hitch. One thing that I did notice though is there's just a lot of chucking. Um, not sure if it's just the trailer, the way it's balanced, but that was my first experience and I've towed fifth wheels in the past and and didn't get that kind of chucking so i decided to purchase a reese elite airborne sidewinder which has an airbag in it um and the plate actually rides on that airbag so it should buffer a lot of that chucking and should make for a smoother ride. One of the issues that I have with this hitch is the design for the pivot. As you can see from this blow up diagram, there are three wear surfaces and no bearings in this pivot point. The Reese 20K on the other hand has a bearing and the pivot rotates very smoothly, a nice fluid action. When I attempt to rotate this pivot point on the airborne sidewinder, I can't move it by hand. Even a three foot bar, I, I cannot make that rotate. So what I did is loosened up on the four bolts. You can see that it pivots smoothly when they're loose, but these bolts are torqued 45 foot-pounds, so when I torque it back down to specs, it gets to the point where I can't rotate this by hand. Now, when I put this on the trailer, using all my force, I can make it move, but it does not have a fluid action. So you can see, after I torqued it back down, it's back to the point where even with a three foot pry bar, I cannot make this thing rotate. A couple of things to note in my side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, the pin boxes actually sit about the same height. The airborne sidewinder looks like it may sit taller um, but as far as the trailer height, they're going to be about the same. So you can see I have the pin sitting on this table and I put just enough wood underneath it so that the top of the turret, the section that bolts to the trailer, um, is sitting parallel to the table. One thing that you will notice is... The Airborne is actually a longer pin box, but the location of the pins are the same. The Airborne Sidewinder is a little bit narrower at about 10 inches, and the 20K Sidewinder measures about 12 inches wide. This is the stock pin box. Very lightweight in comparison to the two Reese's.
certainly not as well built and a little bit disappointed when it came off to see that a lot of the surfaces were not painted this is what it looked like the day i picked it up so brand new trailer that the pin box is already rusting out kind of disappointing you can see that this is the lippert pin box and i'm gonna go ahead and set that in the back of the truck on the fifth wheel hitch and i'll demonstrate why there's a problem with that type of pin box on my 2022 ram with ram boxes you'll notice when i rotate the pin box 90 degrees it actually overhangs the uh, ram boxes on the side of my truck so as it rotates if you were backing this trailer into a tight location that pin box would hit the side of the truck another key difference in these two sidewinders is the way the wedge mounts so the purpose of the wedge is to lock this part of the pin box in the fifth wheel hitch so that it cannot rotate at the pin which forces the rotation back here at the turret so my experience is the tighter this wedge fits into your hitch the better it performs because it avoids any kind of rotational movement at the pin so if you'll notice on the airborne sidewinder there is there is an adjustment but what you have to do is loosen up these two bolts slide the wedge up towards the pin or back away from the pin whichever um generally tap it in with a hammer to make sure it's nice and tight make sure that you're straight so what i like to do is hook the trailer up um latch onto my pin pull forward just a little bit make sure that i'm pulling straight loosen these two bolts tap this in and then tighten them down it's really hard to get up in there when everything's hooked up there's not a lot of room and it's just really not very convenient now if we move over to the 20k sidewinder You'll notice, and I did purchase the custom wedges that are specific to my BMW Companion fifth wheel hitch. The wedge adjustment on the 20K is much simpler in that you can hook up to your fifth wheel and then rotate that thumb wheel and force the wedge into your fifth wheel hitch until it's tight. Now for the side-by-side -side comparison of these two pin boxes in action. I synchronized these two videos going down the exact same route at approximately the same speed. After the first couple of corners, I'll stop the video and show you each hitch individually and you can see how they react going around the corners. The airborne sidewinder has a much jerkier motion as it attempts to rotate. The 20K sidewinder has a much smoother rotational movement. Take note of the movement, especially up and down movement, on the airborne sidewinder where the fifth wheel hitch is moving a lot more up and down and side to side.
as we go around this next corner, we're also going over a dip. And you'll notice that there is some movement, especially on the airborne, at the pin where it has difficulty um, forcing that rotational movement. So there, there is some movement even on the 20K at the pin. front of the trailer are kind of floating. Um, I think the way I compare these is that airborne sidewinder, like a luxury car where you just kind of float down the road versus the Reese 20K being more like a sports car where you can feel the road. But in the end, I think, for me at least, the, the sensation of floating isn't something that I want. 12,000 pound trailer down the road. My towing needs the smoother rotation of the turret on the Reese 20k versus the airborne sidewinder um, makes that Reese 20k a better product for much less money so until Reese changes that turret on the airborne sidewinder and makes that work a little bit better I'm gonna stick with the Reese 20k If my goal were to simply gain a better turning radius, um, the, neither one of these would be an option for me. Again, because I have the RAM boxes, I have to have something that puts that pivot point farther back. So these are pretty much the only two options available. And again, for the money, for the way they both operate, 
Um, save yourself some money and go with the Reese 20K.